us a little bit about the, how the quality of your life has improved because you've been able to incorporate cannabis as a therapeutic. So I was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer about three years ago um, in my last semester of college. And I had a very, very bad prognosis. They gave me about four months to live. Um, and I was desperate for answers and I was desperate to heal myself. So we looked into all different alternative forms of medicine. I was doing acupuncture, I was doing light frequency therapy, I was doing supplements. But then a family friend of ours came and told us about the benefits of cannabis and how it could help me. I remember the exact day when she came over, I was throwing up a lot into a trash can. Um, I could hardly hold myself up. And she came over and she, I didn't even smoke it myself. She just blew it around my face and I just remember within seconds, I stopped throwing up and I, I got up and I, I looked at him and I, I said, oh my God, I don't, I don't feel nauseous anymore. I, I don't even understand how fast that happened, but I don't feel like I have to throw up anymore. And from that second forward, I was ingesting it. I was putting it on topically. I was making small little pills that I was taking as like a vitamin every night. I was doing anything I possibly could to get more and more and more of it into my system. I was juicing the actual leaves and making like a, a wheatgrass shot in the morning that I would just take. And after weeks, if not a month into the process, I had another scan and my tumors had shrunk by 30%. Um, so we were blown away with the benefits of this magical, magical medicine. And that's what it is. It's the medicine. It's my medicine. It's what gave me a second chance at life. So all that I can ask is that you open your minds, open your hearts to how much this can benefit us and how much it can benefit you. As Dr. Uma said, as a preventative, something that you take before you get sick, not when you get sick. So I think that's just... Now, you are currently in other kinds of treatment as well. So um, are, you, are you integrating the two courses of therapy? Of course. Um, so I just started an, a new uh, trial, and it's targeted directly for my liver cancer. But along with that, it's still a lot of the grueling side effects of chemo, um, cramping, severe tiredness. And you know when I'm feeling any of those ailments, having the cannabis with me, it just gives me a sigh of relief. Mm. It gives me a sigh of hope that this isn't gonna last forever. Uh, Dr. Oma, do you wanna speak to specifically how you think that uh, uh, cannabis is a useful uh, cancer treatment? Absolutely. So one of the things that we've learned is, you know, from my years, we use chemotherapy and radiation. We found that using cannabis works very specifically with cancer cells. When we treat with chemotherapy, it kind of is coming in and pulling everything out. What we found with cannabis is it's very targeted and it's uh, specific in not killing the healthy cells and only attacking the cancer cells. And it works with four properties. And the four properties that we know about it is anti-proliferative, which means that it doesn't let the cancer cells multiply. It's anti-metastatic, which means that it doesn't let the cancer cells spread. It cuts off the blood supply, anti-agenesis, and it causes a beautiful thing known as apoptosis, which means cell death. This is what normal happens. When a cell doesn't die, that's also cancer, as you mentioned earlier. Cancer is just a cell gone crazy. We all have this in our bodies. It's what's going to ultimately cause the cancer. And that's why cannabis, I truly believe, is part of prevention and not just treatment. Um, is there certain uh, cancers that you think are maybe more effectively treated, parts of the body that may respond more quickly and efficiently? I think, you know, we're learning now that we've learned from brain cancers, especially glioblastomas, breast cancers, lung cancers, all the things that are contraintuitive, uh, ovarian cancers, different forms of blood cancers, glaucomas, uh, the list just goes on and on, Crohn's disease, uh, hepatitis, uh, HIV, 
uh, IPF, like my mother's illness. Mm -hmm. I just learned of another gentleman that's been using it and he's completely cured. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And I'm talking to my colleagues, like you mentioned, please open your hearts and open your minds. Ask your doctors, what do you know about cannabis? Right now, it's not covered by insurance. Our doctors know little to nothing. Our do patients are being alienated. They're being thrown out of their practices. They're thrown more pills with United States for 5% of the world's population. We're using 80% of the world's opioids. Unacceptable, folks. Can I ask you a question? Um, I, I, you shared with me that they're doing some real breakthrough research where cannabis is concerned in Israel. We don't, we're not seeing it here, and that's because there's a lot of greed behind the big business of being sick. But um, let's, uh, let's look at what's going on in Israel. Can you share with us some of that? Practice? Absolutely. Actually, uh, Tracy Ryan's here, whose daughter suffers from cancer, and she can talk to you a little bit, who's right here, if you don't mind, Welcome. Tracy, standing up to her. But um, she's been here. Do you want to go to that microphone right behind you, if you have? Uh... And you can maybe tell them about Israel. Hello. This was unexpected. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I own a company called Canakids, and we specialize in the treatment of pediatric and adult disease, with cancer being our main focus. We have a collaboration right now with the Technion Institute in Israel, where Professor Dedi Miri is spearheading the most um, incredible research we have ever seen of its kind. He's also very friendly with Dr. Raphael Mishulam. And what they've discovered is that with all the different strains of cannabis, there are actually specific strains that work for different diseases and different extraction methods that work for those specific cancers the best. So we have, we've studied about 700 patients and treated about 700 patients in the last year and a half, and we have tracked those patients from the beginning until the end of their treatment, and some of them are still on treatment today. We have handed them over all of our anecdotal evidence, and with the own, their own research that they're doing there, they're using our information to help hyperspeed the, what they're finding currently. And they've got about 300 to 400 different strains that they've sequenced into Israel, and they're laying them over all of the different cancer cells. All that they're, they're doing breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, glioblastoma. They're even studying autism and epilepsy. And what they have found is that there are certain strains that kill certain genetic mutations in these diseases. And what they are then doing is they are taking those strains and they're doing what's called fractionation technology, and they're able to figure out what cannabinoids, terpenoids, and flavonoids in each of those strains are responsible for that cellular death. They have figured out how to block the BRCA mutation in breast cancer, you guys, in a well plate. So as part of Canakid's um, relationship with them, we're helping to further fund their research over the next two and a half years. And what's exciting is that as that research is then developed, they're going to give us those recipes. And right here in Los Angeles, we will be formulating those medicines to help block those mutations in those individual diseases. And we are slated right now to take our first pediatric patient in hospitals around March or April of this coming year here in Los Angeles. Wow. Hopefully we'll be able to do more of that here. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's Thank great. you. Um, I think we have time to take a couple of questions here. So, uh, it, does anybody have a question? And if you do, head over to one of these two microphones. No? Okay, go to the, yeah, perfect. This is a little strange, but you're suggesting that the American Medical Association has a reason, perhaps, of quieting this information. And uh, just, uh, I'm wondering also, this is a, a flashback uh, to quaaludes, because uh, how, they t <laughs> how they totally disappeared and how quieted they became when they were, uh, if you were you know, uh, my age and doing them at the time, you, you uh, under felt the same way you feel maybe about cannabis, you know, about how I enlightening and how uh, nurturing and, and all the successful sides of it are. Yep. Um, so, mm, can anyone speak to uh, that? I, you know, I, I just want to uh, say something very quickly. Uh, it, it, you know, our Constitution was written on hemp paper, and uh, the um, and after World War II, there was a big um, 
uh, push in Washington to encourage American farmers to grow hemp. But within five minutes, all the big business lobbyists clamped down on the elected officials and said, are you crazy? That's going to put out, you know, the uh, oil business and the cotton business and the paper business and, you know, uh, the uh, alcohol and all of these things were very threatened by this very, very versatile weed that would reduce us destroying our important forests and up and down the ladder help us to live more efficiently. So really, it's politically charged. Mm -hmm. And at the end of all of the problems that we experience, it usually lends itself to a big business greed. So what we really need to do, and if you guys have anything to add to this, is to become aware of that and then start putting pressure on our elected officials and make this a, uh, you know, a, a, a subject to discuss with any candidate that may be running for an elected office. I want to get this last question in. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, for sharing your story as well. Uh, my question is for the doctor. Can you use the cannabis without the THC mind-altering effects? Okay. I have a real issue. I'm like, what is wrong with people being happy? That's my question to you. What is wrong? I call THC the healing cannabinoid. You know, the healthy choice. Yes, you can. Okay, to answer that. But I want people to understand, if pharmaceuticals got a hold of this, we'd have 80 different cannabinoids. Cannabis, cannabis means canna, stalk, or fiber, and bis means two sexes. The plant has over 400 different chemicals, over 80 different cannabinoids. THC is one cannabinoid, CBD is one cannabinoid. There's so many other ones, and it's okay to be happy, folks, really. Mm. And we need to maybe use this to relax in different types of ways. And remember, this plant was food, fuel, fiber, mm -hmm. paper, and medicine. And there's clear correlations from the time we removed this, cancer has uh, increased proportion because we've replaced it with synthetic, 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 synthetic. Um, who said that? Some, oh, yeah, can you go up to the microphone a minute? And while we're waiting, does the mom, Chrissy, have anything to add? I know that it must be a terribly like, challenging uh, thing pills. to have a child uh, that has a serious disease. Yes, um, when Tawny was first diagnosed, it was almost three years ago, she was taking 20 different pills. Um, water pills to get rid of the fluid that was building up in her stomach, pain pills, long-term pain pills, short-term pain pills, um, you name it, she was on it. And when she came home and she started using cannabis, one by one, these pills were deleted. You know, well, she doesn't need that anymore. The water's not building up anymore. The fluid's yes. no longer there. And little by little, she got down to where she was taking nothing, mm -hmm. just her CBD pill. And, you know, as a parent, you know, if someone would tell me this 10 years ago that it would be something I would encourage and fight for, I probably would have said not a chance, but <laughs> seeing it and seeing her at 80 pounds and, and being pale and sick and looking at her now, it's clearly working. Mm. So I would encourage everybody too to, you know, don't be so narrow-minded and, and explore a little bit more. Find out. Fran is right. Knowledge is power. So find out more. Thank you, thank you. And one last question. Hi, thanks for letting me um, ask a question. Um, I'm seeing a doctor, his, his name is Dr. Frankel, and he's a medical marijuana doctor. Um, for stage one cancer with the BRCA gene, he put me on 15 milligrams of CBD, and I think it's two or three milligrams of THC in one pill. Um, at night, it was a higher dose of THC and a, and a smaller dose, no, a higher dose of THC, same dose of CBD. I can't take the THC, I, I, it gives me panic attacks, so I've gotta find something to bring that down. But the, the question is, is after all the research they've been doing, how do they know how much to give somebody? Like every time I take it, I'm like, is this enough? Should I be, should I be smoking it too? Should I be, you know? Excellent question. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I, Excellent question. And you know, this is what I tell people. We, in my office, we start out by saying three rules. 
Hydrate before you medicate. You'll hear me roar and saying that. Hydrate before you medicate. Why? What are the side effects of cannabis? Dry mouth, dry throat, can make you feel panicky and anxious. All the things that it treats, it can cause. And people just don't drink enough. So hydrate always. And I tell them also start out low or very low and slow and journal. So when they say start with a pinhead, they mean start with a pinhead and take it with food. I started with three little rice grains on my finger that I would just lick every day and then slowly you work yourself up because it is, it's a trial and error. You're figuring out your body just like it's figuring out you. So it's a, it's, you're working together. You could start out slow, and we could talk about this in more detail, but it's, it's starting out slow and seeing what works. And remember, how many people have died from this, folks? Zero. I want to get that across to you. Zero. So you're not going to die from this. So again, this is the part that the Western medicine has taught us about dosing, dosing, dosing. I say titrate. Start out with a little bit. This is not like other meds where we say, take 500 milligrams twice a day for a week and be on it forever. This is how you manage for you and your symptoms. Mm -hmm. And actually, we're used to management, uh, you know, managing drugs. I mean, my parents are on blood thinners, and it's like, oh, we gotta get our blood checked, maybe I'm taking too much. They take three days this, two days that, all different amounts. You know, it's like we just have to get used to listening to our body, asking the doctors, is more better or is less better? And, uh, and judging how you feel. So um, thank you all thank for you. sharing this. It's another porthole of consideration for your health and well-being. So nutrition is a really important part of uh, the process. Uh, the very first time that I see a patient, I talk about diet, nutrition, supplements with the patients so they know when they can take certain supplements, when they can't, and uh, how things go. Those should be questions that you take with your loved one who has cancer or a friend or yourself, God forbid, uh, to your doctor to discuss.